Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahushai, Ba'asham Chakudash, the honors to the elders and apostles of Great Muslim, the Ruel. Peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom and a Baba Ball. Back at it with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahushai. Lord, will this video is edifying. Okay. And I just wanted to do a little quick exhortation through the spirit to brothers who are, you know, might be uh, newer in the faith. OK. And, um, you know, this is just a form of a little exhortation for spiritual independence. OK. Now, um, this is not to say that you can learn on your own and you don't need men's help and you don't need men to teach you. All right. I want to go ahead and address that out the gate. This is not about that, okay? This is about, you know, maintaining your integrity, holding your position in this faith, being firm in the faith, being steadfast, all right, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, you know, and even when brothers aren't around to help you or guide you, you see? Now, of course, the Lord, you know, set certain men up in the spirit to help lead the flock, okay? According to prophecy, according to the scriptures, you know, like the Lord said, I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with with, not, with understanding. You know, Jeremiah 3, 15, you know, so of course, the Lord sets up certain men to the flock, you know, Acts, the eighth chapter where the Ethiopian eunuch said, you know, how should I know the scriptures lest some man should guide me, you see? But um, nonetheless... OK, we want to make sure that we're still holding our post and still keeping our charge, still doing our job in this truth and in this walk, even if brothers aren't around. OK, and that's really something I just wanted to exhort through the spirit. So I'm going to go and just get a couple of scriptures and, you know, we'll just go from there, man. OK, because even if brothers aren't around or a brother might be on a different mission from you. OK, you got to make sure that you still do what you have to do, man. All right. Because at the end of the day, we all have to work out our own salvation. And let's go. Let's get that. It's Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. It says, wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, that is in my presence only. OK, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You see, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. All right. So we all have to work our own salvation, whether a brother's in our presence or not. You see, if anything, we should be much more on our job when brothers aren't around because we don't have anyone there to police ourselves. You see, you know, so you want to make sure that you're on point. You're staying on point whether brothers are around or not. Like I said, it's now much more in my absence. All right. And uh, actually, there's a little account in the scriptures with. um. Yahushai, all right, this is John 21, starting at, um, uh, 19, this spake he signifying, but what death he should glorify the most high. It says, and when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, follow me, right? So Yahushai is telling Peter to follow him, right? Then Peter turning about, seeth the disciple whom Yahushai loved following, which also leaned on his breast at supper and said, Lord, which is he that betrayed thee? Peter seeing him, saith to Yahushai, Lord, and what shall this man do? So Peter's asking the Lord, you know, what's this disciple going to do, so to speak, right? Yahushai said unto him, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. So the Lord's saying, if I'm telling him to wait, or if I want him to wait until I until I come, what's that to you? You know, what's that matter to you? Pretty much, follow thou me, because Yahweh is saying, I instructed you, Peter, to follow me. You know, and if he waits, what's that? What's that to you? You know, pretty much going to show you what we all have our own mission in the faith. Now, brothers can link up from time to time, and you know, we get together. All right, like Scripture say in Psalms one thirty three. All right, let me get it real quick. All right. Psalms chapter 133 and verse one, a song of degrees of David. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. You see, so sometimes brothers link together in unity. Brothers get together from time to time. A lot of times, you know, brothers do that like the church tells us in Hebrews. And um, let me get that real quick. 
call I am like Bashma Shy. All right, let me see. Let's see. Hebrews 10 and 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another so much the more as ye see the day approaching. You see, so Psalms 133 and 1, a song of degrees of David. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Yes, yeah, so we dwell with brothers much more now that we see the day uh, of Jacob's trouble, the time is at hand, you know, the judgment is at hand. And you see, it is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garments. As the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. You see, so when you're around, brothers, it gives you a certain type of unction and anointing in the spirit, man, that you can only really feel when you're around the brothers. <coughs> and the spirit of the Lord is in the midst, okay? But nonetheless, okay. We all still have our own mission in the faith, man. And the Lord might have it to where, you know, brothers will split up. Because, uh, you know, more edification can be brought out <clears throat> when brothers are spread out in different areas. You see, like, as you can see, a lot of different camps, okay, they, um, a lot of, like, big camps, all right, they'll break off into certain subdivisions. It might be, like, four to five brothers in one uh, subdivision of a camp, so to speak, but altogether the camp might have, you know, 50-plus brothers, you see, but the brothers will spread out around the city. Okay, and do the work and edify because more edification can be can go out. Kind of like when Yahweh Shai was having the disciples go together two and two, you see, or two disciples at a time, if you will. But brothers are still branching out. So point being, I want to say is sometimes brothers are going to be on a different mission than you. You might be alone. You might be with another brother. You might be with multiple brothers, you know, but at the end of, time, by the, end of the day, yeah, as long as Yahweh Hashem is still with us, man, that's all that matters, okay? And not knocking the fact that, you know, it's a good thing to have brothers around, okay? But at the same time, you still want to have a form of spiritual independence as well, you see? To at least maintain your post, you see? So, that's the point, okay? And uh, let's go and get the next scripture. Let's get this real quick. This is uh, 1 Timothy 3. And, um... Verse 15 says, but if I tarry long, I mean, if I wait long, if I, you know, if I don't come soon enough, right? It says that thou mayest know how thou ought, thou, thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of the most high, which is the church of the living power, the pillar and the ground of the truth. All right. So, you know, ultimately he was writing to Timothy, certain things about the church, but nonetheless, okay. We have the scripture today to instruct us, you see? And that's why the scripture is also saying um uh Second Timothy, the third chapter, in verse 16, it says, All scripture is given by inspiration of Yahweh Bashmel Shai, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of the most high may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. You see, so we have the scriptures to help shape us and form us and make us perfect, man. You see? But ultimately, you know, you stick to the scriptures, man. If a brother's not around, you still stick to the scriptures. You still stick to the doctrine. You still teach what was taught. And thankfully, you know, you do have brothers on YouTube so you can access stuff and, you know, do certain research and stuff like that. But, um, you know, pretty much just want to exhort brothers, man. Even if brothers aren't around, you still want to still maintain a form of spiritual independence and hold your and hold your charge. Keep your post, man. All right. Work out your own salvation, man. OK, because, you know, hey, even if let's just say hypothetically, all right, which I highly doubt this will happen, but not saying it's impossible. But let's say hypothetically, there's no brothers around to teach. There's no brothers around to help you, you know, whatever the case might be. OK, the show still has to go on. So you still have to make sure that you're being diligent within yourself, working out your own salvation. OK, to help keep the show rolling and keep the business. How about your mouth shy going, man, and keep the flock fed? You see, that's why the scriptures say in uh, Second Corinthians chapter five and verse 10, it says, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Mashiach, that everyone may receive the things done in his body. According to that, he have done whether it be good or bad. So we all have to make account of our own selves to Yahweh Shemashai. Another brother cannot be saved 
for you. Neither can you save another brother. Now, you can lead another brother to salvation. All right. But you getting beamed up on that chariot is not going to reserve another brother's seat beamed up on that chariot. You know, that's that's it's it, each, each individual has to work out their own salvation in their own individual way. However, the most high may have it set up for them. You see. Verse 11, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto the Most High, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. All right, yeah, okay. And, you know, we know the Most High is fearful. That's why I'm exhorting this two brothers, man. All right, it's just because just another brother's not around doesn't give you an excuse to just drop the plow and just not do the work anymore, man. All right, now, if you need guidance, you pray to the Lord to give you guidance, and, you know, in due time with faith, okay, the Lord will give you that guidance, man, okay. It's nothing for the most high to give a man wisdom, you see, but at the same time, that doesn't mean you just give up, okay, just because you don't, you don't have somewhere that, someone to guide you, as for, this is Philippians 1 and 27, it says, only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Mashiach, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel, you see, so, that's the point of that right there. OK, whether we're absent or we're or we're present, you know, you still want to stand fast in one spirit with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel, man. OK, and uh, that's what the Apostle Paul was exhorting a lot to, um, you know, the churches that whom he was teaching, because, you know, a lot of times he had to be on the move. OK. And guess what, man, regardless if your teacher is with you or not, you know, you still have to stand post, man. Because, hey, if we want to be technical, you know, Yahweh Shai is with us in spirit. OK, but he's not with us in our physical presence, but he is with us in spirit, you know. But does that mean that, oh, just because we can't see Yahweh Shai, he ain't here. Does that mean we don't do the right thing? The scriptures talk about how, you know, blessed are they that do not see yet believe. And the scriptures also talk about him who we believe on, even though we haven't seen him, man. You see, we now we see the spirit of the Lord in brothers, you know, and we see the spirit of the Lord within our own lives, you know, depending on, you know, whom this may apply to. OK, really, every it really applies to everybody if you really want to get technical because, you know, but nonetheless, OK, still the Lord is not physically here with us. You, you cannot physically see your house. You cannot physically touch on your house. you know, hug him, you know, worship him, reverence him, you know, at his feet, if you will. OK, but he's here with us in spirit. But just because we can't physically see him tangibly, does that mean that we just don't do what he requires of us anymore? No, man. If anything, that means we do we do it much more. You see, this is Colossians chapter two and. Uh, verse five, it's, it says, for though I be absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in the spirit. Joying and beholding your order and steadfast of your faith in Mashiach. You see, and this is what the Apostle Paul wrote to the church of, of the Colossians. But how much more you have about Shemel Shai? You know, you have about Shemel Shai may be absent with us in flesh, but yet they're with us in the spirit, man. So that should be, give you much more exhortation to follow the Lord, man. This is Matthew chapter 28. I'll, um, I'll start at verse uh, 28 or 20. It's, actually, I'll start at verse 18. All right. It says, um, uh, it says, and Yahushai came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. Even unto the end of the world, you see, so the Lord, he's always with us, man. OK, he's with us in spirit and the Lord, he's doing so much behind the scenes that we don't even know, man. You know, and we just we just see it play out into fruition, into our everyday lives. You see, so the Lord is there with us, man. All right, even though a brother might be there, might not be there with you tangibly. Guess what? The Lord's still here with us in spirit and brothers are still here with each other in spirit, man. You see, so you always want to remember that. And uh, hold fast to that, man. So hold fast to your integrity, man. Okay, whether regardless if brothers are there or not, you still want to make sure that you're doing the right thing, man. Okay, and I actually um I'll uh I'll probably just close out with this scripture, Lord will. Because the point has been made through the spirit. This is uh first Corinthians fifteen and um 
verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. You see, so that's the point, man. We have to be steadfast, unmovable, man. Always abounding in the work of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, man. Because our labors are not in vain. So, you know, hey, if a brother ain't around, okay, pray to the Lord that he keep you in the faith, that he keep you in the right spirit, that he, and if, and if, if just so happens to where a brother move out of town or whatever the case might be, who knows? You know, you pray to the Lord that he gives you the proper gui guidance, man. Okay, because the Lord is not going to uh, uh, leave his flock astray. All right, and if you are the flock of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh you will not be left astray, man. Do not worry. Okay, but I just wanted to exhort brothers that through the spirit, all right? Let me get this last precept, Lord. Well, I know I said I was going to get one more, but let me just get this. Second Ezra 1 and 37. I actually got two more because, you know. Second Ezra 1 and 37. I take to the witness the grace of the people to come whose little ones rejoice in gladness. And though they have not seen me with bodily eyes, yet in spirit they believe the thing that I say. Yeah, we ain't seen the Lord in bodily eyes. All right, but we still believe. Okay. Let me get this last one in Peter, Lord willing. All right, this is uh, 1 Peter 1 and uh, verse 7. It says that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Yahweh Shem Mashiach, whom having not seen, Ye love in whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing ye rejoice with unspeakable, with joy unspeakable and full of glory, man. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. You see, that's the point of that right there, man. All right. So with that, I want to give all praise, honor and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Chagudash, double honor to the elders and apostles, the great millstone, every well. Peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom and a Baba